In this video, I'd like to explain some basic concepts about fractions. First off, fractions can be interpreted as a division problem or a ratio. I'll begin by introducing three types of fractions. First, there's the ordinary fraction, where we have a smaller number over a larger number. For example, 5 ninths, 3 eighths, 2 over 47. You can see smaller number over larger number. And essentially, this means 5 divided by 9, which is 0 0.5, 5, 6, etc. 3 divided by 8, which is exactly 0.375. And 2 divided by 47, which is 0 0.0246, etc. I want to point out that fractions, where um, what we call ordinary fractions, where we have a smaller number over a larger number, the value of these fractions are between 0 and 1. In other words, decimal values, really small numbers. The next type of fraction is improper fraction. This is where we have the larger number in the numerator and the smaller number in the denominator. And these values are greater than 1. So 7 divided by 6, or 7 6, is 1.67, etc. That's rounded. 5 over 2 is 5 divided by 2, or 2.5. 57 over 4, or 57 divided by 4, is 14.25. Then there's something called a mixed numeral, where we have a whole number next to a regular fraction. So a whole number next to a smaller number over a larger number. For example, 1 and 1 sixth. 2 and 1 half, 14 and 1 fourth. Now these mixed numerals are really addition problems. We're adding the whole number to the fractional value. So 1 and 1 sixth is 1 plus 1 sixth. 2 and 1 half is 2 plus 1 half. 14 and a quarter is 14 plus 1 quarter. And there are the corresponding values. Because mixed numerals are whole numbers and a fraction, the values of mixed numerals are, of course, greater than 1. I included the improper fraction that would represent the mixed numerals. We could see that these are the improper fractions that I showed you earlier. So if we think of a fraction as a division problem, 7 divided by 6, if you actually were to write out the division problem, you'd say, OK, 6 goes into 7 one time, and then there's a remainder. And the remainder is 1 6. 5 divided by 2, well, 2 goes into 5 two times with a remainder of 1 half. And 4 goes into 57 14 times with a remainder of 1 quarter. And we see, as stated before, improper fractions have values that are greater than 1, which is consistent with what we see here. In this video, I'd like to show you common fractions and their values. I consider these three fractions common. I think most people would know the value of these fractions. 1 half is exactly 0.5. One third is a repeating decimal of 0.3333. One tenth is 0.1. You could use these three fractions to help you determine other common fractions. So for example, we could develop the fractional values for a quarter, a fifth, one sixth, one eighth, and one ninth, and estimate the value of one seventh. So one quarter can be interpreted as one half of one half. So one half times one half, which is one half times 0.5. And if you take half of 0.5, you'll get 0.25. For a moment, you can imagine that the fractional value 0.5 is like 50. And if you divide 50 in half, or take one half of 50, it's 25. Shift the decimal, and you'll get 0.25. One-fifth, though, 
is really twice one-tenth, you'll get 0.2. With one-sixth, one-sixth is a half of one-third, or one-half times 0.33. For a moment, imagine 0.33 as 33, and 33 is close to 30. And if you take half of 30, it's 15. I'll skip one-seventh for now, and one-eighth is one-half of one-quarter, or one-half times one-quarter, or one-half of 0.25. Again, imagine 0.25 as 25 for a moment, and if you divide 25 in half, it's 12 and a half, or 12.5. Now, imagine if you have 33, and you divide 33 by 3. Well, that's 11. Shift the decimal, and you'll see that 0.33 divided by 3 is 0.11. And finally, there's 1 seventh. I did not provide an exact value for 1 seventh, but you could estimate that it's going to be between 0.167 and 0.125. Of course, because 1 seventh is between 1 sixth and 1 eighth. We can see that as the denominator value gets larger, the value of the fraction is smaller.